All right, y'all. We are actually getting in the water to try to get some good action footage of this bait. Welcome back, everybody, to the world's worst fishing. I'm your host, Chris Jones, and uh, thanks for being here again today for another mold release video. Um, this one being super exciting. Uh, it's a mold unlike any other in the way that it is configured and the way that you inject it. Uh, so really exciting to, uh, or excuse me, excited to show you guys that from AI Molds, of course. But first, it is that time of year again. Yeah, we did the eight layer American flag swim bait pour again. Like I was saying, you may have seen these already, but uh, you haven't seen them on video like this. So yeah, that is the uh, AI seven and a quarter inch mold. And uh, this is dead on plastics tube blend for for the big stuff so the challenge here being to not only fit all eight layers in but to try to get your spacing even to try to get the uh the stripes of the flag to stop in the head and uh in the tail there and just overall get the color saturation and get the little stars in the head so really cool stuff did a video on these several years ago when I kind of first tried this pour, and uh, it's just one of those that I try to break out every year. Okay, so we have two molds here, and you might notice something looks really different, right? Look at this one. A normal mold with top injection, right? What is going on here? Oh, hello everyone. What is going on here? Hmm. We see top, bottom, hand engraved, and the injection port is here, which means I have to set it down like a skirt mold and inject it, but how does it laminate? What is going on? Well, before we get there, let's look at how the mold would be normally laid out. Um, this is a little bit more what you guys are used to, right? So again, there is the test mold or not necessarily a test mold but just one of the beta molds um, during the kind of R&D process and again it's the 3.8 inch it is the same exact length and size as the uh, open pour here um, now in terms of um, the bottom of course right so this being open pour it's going to have a completely smooth top just because of the open pour surface um, what he did is he kind of did what he did like he did on the action worm and just gave that bottom a little bit of texture there, okay? So that's how the cavities look. Um, but, you know, all the same uh, dimensions are pretty much the same. Just instead of this being completely smooth, it has a little bit of texture going on. Um, very similar to the action worm. So we're gonna di we're also going to shoot this mold today, but just, just to kind of show you all what was going on, they were just having air get trapped right up there in those really deep eye sockets. You know, one of the main features of a shrimp are those big eyes that they have. And, um, you know, he really wanted to keep that feature just like the open pour version. But that's a nightmare for injection. Uh, just take it from us, take it from Josh and, uh, and Gary going through all the, all the test uh, molds here. That proved to be difficult. So what Josh came up with was a way to beat gravity, okay? Let's look at this. This is, uh, <laughs> this is truly unique. All right, here's the injection port. You open it up, look at this, okay? Right, the plastic, it, it's, it's so strange to not see where the plastic's gonna run out the top of the mold because it doesn't. It comes in this way, it goes yeek, makes a turn, makes another turn, and then as you can see, the cavities are now arranged like that instead of like, like this, okay? So now the plastic is flowing a completely different direction. This one, the normal one, that would stand up this way, right? The, the, the plastic comes down and then fills them normally. This one is completely different. And what this allowed was these eyeballs to, to fill in correctly and not trap air. 
Um, Josh explained it to me over the phone a couple of times and it was very technical, but basically this was a solution to allow air escape that basically cheats gravity a little bit. Um, and I just find it to be completely fascinating. I mean, who would have thought um, of something like that? Um, this is the first hand injection mold I've ever seen configured like this. So literally the plastic goes in right there, okay? It immediately makes a turn, okay? It has to go in, down, then turn, go sideways, and then make a turn, and then go into the cavities. And the best part is, it laminates, top to bottom. And of course, for today's video, where you're going to be using dead on plastics, and uh, because this is a saltwater bait that I actually intend to take fishing, uh, in salt water, we're going to make it out of craw tube blend, which is the firmest plastic that I currently have. Dead On also makes salt water blend, uh, which is a super firm, very durable plastic for those toothy crittered fish. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with sort of a just kind of natural color base. This is Scuppernog, um, which is sort of a, a kind of almost brick colored brown, as you can see there. It's not as red as like the uh, cinnamon color, but it makes a nice color base, I think, yeah. And then what we're gonna do is load it with flakes, but first, this plastic is kinda set up a little bit too much. We're gonna pop that back in the microwave, and um, yeah, it just, it's gonna set up too much by the time I stir in the glitter, so a quick reheat, and we will be right back. All right, yeah, now we're just gonna add a lot of flakes. So we're gonna add some medium black to it. You know, a lot of, uh, if you look at a lot of saltwater colors, um, heavy on the flakes, lots of holograms, lots of, uh, lots of shiny things to attract uh, those sight feeders. So now we're actually gonna add some copper flake, which is something I don't do a whole lot of, but we're gonna put some in there. All right. And then we're gonna add some small gold flake and just kind of see where that gets us. All right. And this should be plenty sparkly by now. Yeah. This will just be for like just a simple solid color, you know. A lot of y'all making these at home to take, to take fishing are uh, probably not going to go for the super complex triple laminates just for home for for personal use you know, you're going to make something that you think is going to catch a fish so that's sort of uh what this is yeah i think that looks pretty good all right here we go this is going to look a little odd because of the two different types of injection port but here we go okay so here's the uh, vertical mold, and we're gonna go to the flat mold. Got blue all over me somehow. All right, yeah, so we held a little bit of pressure there. Feels good. Clean off the, uh, clean off the injector there. All right, now it's time for this one. I tell you, it feels exactly the same. It, it, there's no difference in the feel of the injection push. Like it, it honestly feels like it's completely normal. I guess we'll top it off. You know, again, this this kind of mold configuration on the uh, final version is completely different um, in terms of how the plastic flows. You know, if we if we come over here and just look at the two molds, you know, a typical injection process in a vertical mold, and by that I just mean a mold that stands up, right? You're you're filling the plastic aiming down right so gravity is gonna is gonna play a factor in the path the plastic takes into the mold I actually had some clear molds cut by Josh um, a video a long time ago where we looked at the exact path that the plastic takes and basically it fills up in the bottom and then kind of injects on its way up top this one over here the plastic takes a completely different path um, which is completely guided by the push of the plastic as opposed to gravity just letting the plastic kind of fill up from the bottom to the top. Um, so it's really important that you have your temperatures and viscosities even when you go to laminate this mold because the path of the plastic 
is completely, completely different. Um, so it's actually going to train you to pay attention to your temperatures um, and in a way make you a little bit more disciplined of a bait maker. All right, new mold. Y'all know we got to do it. Drum roll, please. Okay, boy, this is different. Just look at that. That is so unique. Yeah. Okay. It sort of has like a coffee uh, vibe to it, the color. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Yeah, I love scuppernog. It just kind of works for a lot of things. Look at this. That is so different. I love it. It's it's exactly like uh, doing a skirt mold. You gotta lay it down. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that filled absolutely amazing. And again, I was uh, keeping my temperatures pretty low. I'm not wild about this color. We might mix up a different solid color to try to show it better. I do think this will get bit though. Yeah. yeah everything looks like everything filled in nicely. So one thing that I think Josh was saying is that the eyes are still a little bit deeper on the open pour. Um, but they were able to get that big um, bug eye there um, to fill on these. So that was um, maybe maybe the only fundamental change to the bait. And then to orient the mold this way, um, he was able to make it as uh, foolproof as possible. You know, because they don't want to, um, you know, they, they try not to make a, a mold where you're just really going to have to struggle with it to get it to work and temperamental. You know, the idea is to make things as plug and play as possible. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So now we're going to get out the, I guess, traditional layout version. All right. Kind of see how this one looks. Okay, yeah. So that looks a little bit more normal, but um, yeah, okay. Ah, okay. There it is, right there. Let's uh, let's let's get close. See how that eye kind of didn't right that side filled in, but that side didn't. See that right there? Just that little detail was uh, was was kind of what what was stopping them from from uh, keeping the mold in that configuration. Yeah, we are getting up close and personal today, y'all. Look at that. Yep, so there's basically the reason for doing it uh, the other way. So let's go back, and we're going to get real up close with the ones from the new, new configuration. And you can see both sides of those eyes are filling in. Wow. Little details, y'all. Little details. You know, that goes, that just goes to show, uh, you know, the level of attention that goes into making a mold. Um, perform the right way, you know, you've got to really really look close at how it's performing how the mold fills and um, You know that right there is a level of attention that uh, AI has been come to known for so anyway really cool to kind of see that distinction up close and sort of the reason for the uh, very creative Orientation all right, we're gonna start over well not start over but we're gonna do an additional single solid color and uh, this time we're gonna go with some hypershift ZTF, okay? Which uh, which always looks cool. It's a super awesome pigment, and uh, takes a little bit of stirring to stir it in, but no harm, no foul. There again, we're not gonna do like a ton of it. We're gonna keep it fairly light, fairly see-through. Oh, isn't that cool? Just look at it. It's almost got like a brown and greenish vibe. I use this one in my swim bait color called Emerald Shad because it looks so good with green. Okay, green sparkle flake time. 
think this will look kind of cool. Hopefully it does, at least. We will find out. Okay, looks really great in person. You never know how something's going to come through on camera. But so far, that's not too bad. Here we go. Yeah, boy, that feels nice. Okay, top that one off. And might as well top that one off. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's see what we've got. Hope they're gonna come out on that side. Yeah, looking good. Actually got a dent there, which uh, I injected the plastic pretty cold, but um, in any event, no harm, no foul. We will take these out. Oops, I'm just kind of interested to see if the, uh, if the color, oh yeah, check out this color. Ooh, shiny. That would look good laminated over like just a clear belly. Yeah, lots of effect going on there. And again, I think it's a fishable color. All right, now let's open up this one. The uh, final configuration version. Yeah, it looks good. Don't see any dent. Yeah, nice flat bottoms there. Perfect. A perfect run. That always feels good when you get a, a perfect shot on a mold. Yeah. Yep, all the eyes filled out. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, kind of, kind of some different sort of color ideas for these just uh, on the solid colors. When I did the uh, open pour video, I don't even think I even did a solid color. So yeah, check that out. All right, so we're gonna go with an electric chicken, which is basically a hot pink and a very, very bright lime green, okay? All right, so these are dead on pigments here. We have Neo Magenta on the left for our pink. And then we have, uh, you know what? This one, this one might be just either lime or neo lime. The label fell off, and that's the old kind of bottle. I've had that a while, but um, that's essentially the color base. And I love Electric Chicken. It is the most, to me, it's the most exciting looking saltwater laminate. I absolutely love it, and uh, I particularly like how when they laminate certain thin parts where the two colors come together form an orange right you kind of get that orange color there yeah okay it's not looking bad i think we need a little bit more saturation on the pink and the green just so that we get a good contrast of laminate so what we're going to do now is add a few flakes so on the um let's see how do i want to do this i think i want Decision, th th this is decision time, is how do I want my flakes? Um, all right, so I think we're gonna do some medium black flake on the pink side, which traditionally, just go Google pictures of electric chicken. They don't really have black flake in them necessarily, at least not that I kind of remember. So we're kind of doing our own little homemade version here, which is, hey, why we do our own homemade baits to begin with, so that you can do things your way, right? Angling AI molds, I think their slogan is, make your baits your way. So, that's exactly what we're doing. We are making electric chicken, Chris Jones style. All right, so as we can see, this is how you actually do the blending block. Top, belly, okay? So you need top side, left side, when this port is kind of facing this way, right? If the mold was turned the other way, it'd be the other way. So anyway, we're gonna do the pink on the top side. So uh, here we go. Okay, let's get it in there and nice and slow and steady. Okay. And again, you want your viscosities of both colors, both sides need to be as even in temperature as possible. 
so that you get a good even flow of the plastic which is true for any mold that you're going to laminate just this one in particular since there's really no gravity assistance um, in the in the two colors going down into the bottom of the runner and then coming up the only way that this plastic can get where it needs to go is if you push it in there right um, and so just the way that the runner has to take this wild path um, you really need your viscosity is the same which generally means your temperatures need to be within like a five degree margin of each other all right so after all that tech talk let's see how i actually did the uh, blending block looks good i know some of y'all like to see the the blending block opened so yeah there's the two colors all right and let's see what happened did we get what we wanted to get i think so i think the plastic ran really even um so we will see only time will tell and by time i mean right now oh yeah okay not bad i actually really like the way that that did that i didn't get a perfect laminate i, I don't know did i okay all right yeah so it looks like that one the pink kind of over uh, overpowered the green on that one but i mean look at these and what I'm noticing is that what I'm noticing is that I need to I need my colors to be brightened. That's what I need. Yeah. So let's just get one out here. Just look at it a little bit closer. Yeah, look at that. You can see how it kind of makes them orange in certain areas. I don't know, that's actually not a bad electric chicken, y'all. yeah but i mean isn't that cool that the plastic can literally do what it's doing and it still laminates <laughs> still will do a top to bottom laminate and that's my first try all right sorry y'all we got lots of laundry noise but it is time to do the next round of these so that's what we're gonna do nice slow steady push yeah Okay. Yeah, that's mixing pretty well. Okay. All right, now let's look at the second run of the electric chickens. <laughs> I love it. I love how you almost get like, um, sort of like the split tail effect, and that's just the green not being so saturated. It kind of gets a little lost in that tail and the pink kind of takes over but it gives it sort of like a really cool fade doesn't it yeah look at this that's just incredible y'all that is incredible how the plastic laminates taking this wild detour that it does I mean that makes no sense that that works and yet it does all right that was super cool I was really excited to use the mold just to see how the, the sprue went and that crazy configuration and watch it work before my eyes and lo and behold it did. Uh, I had, I had uh, no doubts at all but I had to see it for myself how that thing was going to laminate. Uh, super cool. So um, yeah like I just showed you I've got all of my shrimp bagged up and ready for action. And uh, we will meet you guys down on the island for the annual Jones family vacation. And uh, we'll see y'all there with our shrimp. All right, guys, welcome to the Anna Maria Island City Pier. This is beautiful Tampa Bay. This is where my family vacations every year. And uh, we are bringing y'all on vacation. So obviously we're down here to throw the shrimp around a little bit. And uh, my cousin James, who's up there with the cast net that guy we're gonna film him doing a little bit of cast net action because he uh he likes to come down here and fish for mangrove snapper so we're gonna get a little bit of live bait action some fishing some snapper fishing footage here and we're gonna play with the shrimp yeah. folks he doesn't play because that's a black pearl cast net that is top dollar right top dollar. that is top dollar where you throw it. yeah 
Oh yeah, black pearl nets are uh, are the Rolex. I don't even see anything down there. What you throwing at? Sand brim? Sand brim? Sand brim? Yeah. There's lots of uh, white bait, greenbacks, that kind of stuff. And yeah. Trying to look different. I'm hoping he pulls up a fish that I can replicate in a swim bait for you guys. Yeah. Okay. So there's some nice sand brim. Yeah. Sand brimst. Big ones. Yep. That's good bait right there. Look at that. Oh yeah, a little crab. Put them in the bucket now. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, those are real good ones. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. Oh, smile, you're on camera. Woo, good throw. That's a nice net, too. So there's your pilchard, also known as your greenback shiner down here. It's very much like our thread fin shad that we use for bass. It just doesn't have the kill dot but uh, some really nice browns and greens. You can see this kind of green highlight lateral vein there. Really beautiful eye. It's got that kind of halo around the pupil. Man, I could totally kill this in a swim bait. I'm telling you, dude, I could kill it. All right, guys, check that out. Just a little jig head. Got it rigged about as straight as we can. I don't rig shrimp a whole lot. But uh, basically, we're gonna bounce this around a little bit. Um, we're gonna get some action footage of it in the water. And then we're going to go down to the end of the pier and toss it up under the pylons, bounce it around, see if we can get bit on this thing. So yeah, check it out. Beautiful bait, laminates well, and um, I'm excited to have it here in its rightful environment and not some golf course pond. All right, y'all, we are actually getting in the water to try to get some good action footage of this bait. Because uh, up there on the pier is just a little bit too high above the water and you can't really see the bait on camera So we're gonna basically go to it. We're gonna go to that sandbar over there and uh, See if we can get some really close-ups of the bait hopping along the bottom um, Just to show y'all some action footage and then we're gonna throw this thing around I already had a pinfish bite it So I guess that's quite an honor, but uh, we'll See y'all back in just a minute here. Here's a here's a view I've never gotten is up under the pier. That's pretty neat. All right, yeah, go ahead and hop it. Look at that, y'all. Whoa, whoa! Trying to catch up with it. <laughs> there it is, y'all. All right, hop it slowly. Sorry, y'all, it is real choppy out here today. Yeah. This is the calm, protected side of the bay, too. So that's a little gag grouper. Shake him, finger. Yeah, let me, let, me, let, me, let me check him out. They got so, yeah, they got such soft skin, like a, I don't know, it feels like a catfish. Oop. Oh. <clears throat> See you, dude. All right, well, there are fish in the Gulf, or in the bay. All right, Cousin Chad has two forkfuls of grouper. Look at that. That's still $12.99 worth. Yeah, 
I meant to bring my ice fishing camera, but I forgot. We're coming back to that silver. I might have got one. All right, so back in the beach house, gonna have to go to plan B here for the shrimp bait. What I think is gonna happen is we're gonna have to sneak in to a canal at night that has some underwater lights. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. But um, before I do that, um, let me show y'all a little bit of our vacation, if you can call it that. What's everybody doing here? Hey Landon, are you fishing? Yeah. What what all have you caught? You've caught people from the pool? You've caught more than Daddy has. And this place awesome. Yeah. This is my favorite part over here. Outdoor shower is undefeated. That's that's the most amazing thing. Hammocks are just kind of give or take. Got some cornhole in the backyard here. It's a beautiful place. Not too bad, huh? Well, got on a snapper trip. Shrimp is still hanging out. Hopefully gonna throw that on some flats. But look at that. Beautiful, huh? Already got our limit, so he's going back. So it does it right there down here. Uh oh, uh oh. Snapper on. Look at that. Ain't it great? All right. So we've been walking the surf for a little bit. Throwing the shrimp, <clears throat> nothing biting, but I'm not seeing any fish either. Normally some little snook will get in the surf here early in the morning. And um, you know, there's all sorts of fish running around here. I don't know what all is really here to be honest. This is not my area of expertise. However, we have some good clear shallow water that we can really check out the shrimp. So we'll, uh, we'll sit here and play with some good uh, um, water shots of the bait. Now that we can, well, now that we have better conditions than we did the other day. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's kind of darts around like a fluke on a jig head. You can make it look uh, really alive. Which, you know, if you have the open pour version of the shrimp, you know you know that already. It's, it's virtually the exact same bait. So this is just your friendly injection version for those who don't want to pour it. Yeah, look at that, that's super fun. Like I said, we're just kind of right here on the beach. Yeah, this is cool. That electric chicken shows up pretty good on camera. Just being bright and all. Here comes a wave. <laughs> yeah, this thing is really fun to throw. I, I feel like, and um, I don't throw artificial shrimp a lot, but when I'm working it, I'm kind of just hopping it like a fluke on the bottom. And I feel like that's my best chance. So we're not done yet. This is the last day of vacation. All right, everybody, so we are back in the fish cave, done with vacation. Um, I was sort of encouraged not to sneak into that canal that I was told about, so I had 
some families saying do it do it and then others saying yeah you probably shouldn't sneak in either way um, we decided against it the last night of vacation i just kind of spent with family um, you know i only get to see these people pretty much one week out of the year um, so it was really nice to just spend some quality time um, however i did throw the shrimp a lot in the surf as you just saw there was a really nice redfish that I was able to see kind of cruising right there in, in the break and um, couldn't get him to bite. He was not interested. He just kept swimming. I followed him for as far as I could. Um, but in any event, the mold itself and, uh, and the bait itself is great despite my shortcomings as a saltwater angler. It just, the way it kind of worked out this year, one of my main fishing cousins, he and his wife had a baby the week of our beach house trip. So he was virtually unavailable. And then my other cousin who has access to a boat that I've done some flats fishing with there in the last few years, he threw his back out the week of our vacation and really couldn't move much. Um, so he wasn't there for bowling night or anything like that because he couldn't move. So um, I didn't quite have the fishing access that I wanted. You know, I did get on a brief snapper trip where we were dropping live baits like vertically down on a wreck. It just really wasn't the kind of place where I thought I'd really have success on the shrimp. Um, you know, I dropped it down a few times, but it was sort of, uh, sort of a, a meat trip. You know, my uncle had caught bait and, uh, you know, I wanted to, to try to help him fill a limit and, um, you know, didn't want to be rude and not use the bait that he caught for me. So, um, you throwing the cast net around. So in any event, an awesome trip. I'm glad, I'm glad I got to blog a little bit of it for you guys, um, and take y'all along. And then, of course, you know, the main uh, part of the video, hey, we now have the AI injection shrimp mold, and it's a flat, it, I, I think it's being called flat injection because you lay the mold flat. Super cool, really inspiring the way Josh got it to work, and um, that's coming at you right now. So um, definitely check out the links in the description below for the molds. I believe there's going to be a tail mold. Um, he kind of sent me this mold before I think the tail mold was ready so that I could film with it before vacation. So in any event, um, hope everybody had a good, great, and safe 4th of July. And um, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Plenty more videos to come. We are not even close to being done with this channel. And we will see y'all in the next one.